bookclub.com's book of the month announcement for April 2013. My name is Ferb, and this is my lovely production assistant, Evelyn, uh, who's going to help us later on. <laughs> um, we're listening to friends of mine from Las Vegas named Moksha. Their band is called Moksha. You can find them on the web at mokshatime.com. Okay. So let's get down to it. Which book is going to be Book of the Month this month? I think you know. If you're looking at our homepage. That's what we're going to get it right here on screen. It's the Troy Standard and the Men Behind the Desks by A.G. Fredericks. Congratulations, Mr. Fredericks. Let's take a look at how the voting broke down. Fenway, now's not the time. Okay, so here we go. We are looking at the Troy Standard and the Men Behind the Desks at 50.4% of the voted shares, which came out to be 113.2 shares voted. Second place came uh, this one, um, How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown with 22.7% of the voting shares, which was 51.026 shares cast. Okay. Coming in, number three was um, Where Keynes Went Wrong with 30.133 uh, votes cast, or shares cast, or 13.4% of the vote. Uh, and uh, coming in last place was my choice, uh, Little Pink House, with 13% of the vote, or 29.1 shares cast. We also did have one response for none of the above, which was 0.5% of the votes, or 1.1 share cast. So thanks so much for for participating in the survey. This is how it actually came out pretty close as far as respondents goes. Uh, we had 39 respondents in favor of where Keynes went wrong, 33 for how I found freedom in an unfree world, and 40 participants in favor of the Troy Standard. So uh, by participants, it was pretty close, but uh, they're weighted in, uh, in giving difference to those who give us more information to be able to market. So that's that. We'll have you go to Amazon.com through our affiliate link, which is here on the home page. And that'll bring you over to Amazon, where you can add it to your cart. And then you can proceed to check out, but I'm not going to do that now. We're going to go over to goodreads.com. We're going to change it from want to read to currently reading. And Evelyn, right now, is going to show us <coughs> a neat feature goodreads.com. Evelyn? So, you can see yourself right there. So, on your uh, smartphone, you can have the Goodreads app. Goodreads app has a handy thing called... I don't know if you can see that or not, but... Scan a book or barcode scan. So you hit barcode scan. Go ahead, Evelyn. Then you hit start scanning. Hit start scanning or scan a book. And then you hold it up, Evelyn, you show. You hold it up to the barcode, which is on the back of the book. You can hold the book for Fenwick. Like for you hold the phone. And this is my other production assistant, Fenway. She's going to hold the book up for, for her sister to scan. Her sister's going to scan it. Hold it steady. And then it scans. And then while you're on your phone, you can say, I want to add that to my list.
you can do that. So thank you, ladies. Okay, have a seat. And then when you're done reading the book of the month, you can go to um, our page that has a survey, an exit survey for the book. It also tells you, you know, how long the book is, who published it, uh, the international standard book number. So if you want to buy it at a books and more, a bricks and mortar type store, you can do that. But when you're done reading it, please come back and take our survey. Did you finish reading it? And it has a whole bunch of categories, a place for a review if you want to write one, or if you've already written one and have it on the web, you can put a link to it on there. And then uh, make a suggestion and leave your uh, email address for a proper weighting of your response. So that's what that is all about. Uh, now we've got a couple of things going on with the club that are, you know, not directly related to the Troy standard and the men behind the desk, so we're going to get to that now. Well, we have one event, actually, which I put up on Google+. Plus. We're going to all buy the book tomorrow, April 5th. So we have a, a Facebook, or a, sorry, a Google Plus event started here. Um, which is linked over through our home page or our our page on Facebook as well. You can check that out here. So the link is here. If you're on Facebook, I'll also post the link on Twitter. So you can go to it and then participate by saying yes, you're gonna go, and then you go and buy the book tomorrow through our affiliate links, which are right here. Copy and paste that into your browser or bring it over to Amazon where you can buy it. It's available in paperback or via Kindle. Okay, one more thing going on. We have an event on April 11th at Nordy's Barbecue and Grill in Fort Collins, Colorado, where we will be presenting L. Neil Smith with... Our fifth annual book of the month, uh, book of the year award, which is right here, which everyone's holding. So you can go. I've posted a link over on our Facebook page to the event where you can participate. There's 11 people going right now, and five maybes, but we can fill that joint. And that'll be a lot of fun to meet you all. And again, from our Facebook page we have another thing that happened Ron Paul Ron Paul is in the news and he's making news by endorsing a movie made by Pasha Roberts called Silver Circle which is what our March book of the month was based upon it's a movie tie-in and a graphic novel so he's endorsed the film so I highly encourage you to uh, inquire with your local movie theaters as to when it is going to be showing here or in your local area. So you can check out Ron Paul endorsing the film. That's pretty cool. Congratulations, Pasha Roberts. He knows how to tie a bow tie. All right, so that's what we have there. Let's get on to our four finalists. We have four finalists this month. Uh, the first one, finalist A, the $16 trillion mistake by Bruce S. Jansen. Okay, and we have found a review uh, from Publishers Weekly about this. It's called The $16 trillion mistake, how the U.S. bungled its national priorities from the New Deal to the present. Spurred by unrealized talk of a peace dividend when the Cold War ended, Jansen, the reluctant welfare state, a scholar at the University of Southern California, took nearly a decade to research and write this lucid, remarkably flowing, critical history of American government spending and national priorities from 1932 to the present, uh, tracing the policy and political dynamics that, he says, have wasted $16 trillion 
a conservative estimate, he claims, $16 trillion. Jansen is not referring primarily to the pork barrel expenditures usually associated with government waste, which, he states, amount to only pennies on the dollar. Instead, he focuses primarily on undertaxation of individuals as well as corporations and the resulting huge debt payments in military spending which have chronically crippled vital domestic government programs. Jansen clearly documents sometimes some surprising but key historical issues, such as the severe underfunding of the New Deal in the in Great Society. Historians often portray the New Deal as mammoth, he notes, but it had rel relatively few resources because FDR wouldn't increase taxes to subsidize it. He similarly notes the massive size of Nixon's entitlement expansions and Reagan's ballooning of the debt with the resulting vast interest payments. Both liberals and conservatives care about eliminating the real mother load of government waste, Jansen argues, and he su suggests tax levels 20% of GDP and military policies to do so. Jansen's analysis is strongly persuasive in showing that we've paid dearly for short-term expediency and ideological rigidity and surely need to change. So that's the review of the $16 trillion mistake uh, it doesn't, doesn't tell us who wrote it, but that's uh, from February 26, 2001. Next is Anarchy, State, and Utopia by Ros Robert Nozick, uh, finalist B, which we have right here. And a review by Peter Nampsved. Uh, on Goodreads.com. Uh, this book uses the methodology of explanation rather than argumentative proving to show that a society that starts in an anarchist condition will gradually morph into one that, is gov that has government. Nozick explains how many small neighborhood-sized security associations, small businesses like Brinks with police-like power and their own legal systems, grow into a hierarchy of associations for resolving inter-association disputes until parenthetically, without wars or the use of coercion at all, a national government might be realized. He also argues in his warm and non-forceful way for a natural rights morality in politics. This is in direct opposition to fellow Harvard professor John Rawls' A Theory of Justice. Rawls posited a unanimous decision by us, quote, behind a curtain of ignorance, end quote, where we do not yet know the outcome in our lives of the luck we might have or the different intelligence we each have, that we would agree to a redistribution of wealth slash income. This would be a world, then, where anyone falling into a less equal position should be made well off as long as no other persons are made worse off. Nozick topples the argument of Rawls, which is no spoiler. Alright, and then we go to finalist C. which is Guns and Violence, the English Experience by Joyce Malcolm. We found a review from Mises, the Ludwig von Mises re review, which we will excerpt here. Professor Joyce Lee Malcolm's erudite study has changed my view on gun control. Before reading her book, I was inclined to see gun control in this way. Leaving aside questions about individual rights, there is an obvious argument that supports allowing people to own firearms. If criminals know that their victims may be armed, they are less likely to attack. Guns deter violent crime. The modern state refuses to acknowledge this elementary truth. If people have guns, this allows them to resist the state, and under no circumstances can this be permitted. The need to secure the state outweighs the desire to halt crime. Malcolm's book has shown me that I have radically underestimated the dangers of gun control. Her detailed study of British legislation on the topic shows the real aim of the disarmers. They wish to abolish the right to armed self-defense entirely. The point is not only to block armed resistance to the state, as I had previously thought. In addition, everyone is to be made totally dependent on the state for protection. Some of Malcolm's examples are shocking. In England, quote, merely threatening to defend oneself can also prove illegal, as an elderly lady discovered. She succeeded in frightening, frightening off a gang of thugs by firing a blank from a toy gun, only to be arrested for the crime of putting someone in fear with an imitation firearm. 
So that looks interesting. If you like it, go to our uh, our voting page, freedombookclub.com slash vote.html. Uh, and our final finalist is finalist D. The Diary of Henry Myers by Daryl W. Perry, uh, 2010's Book of the Year Award winner. I think. One of the years. Anyway, we have his a, a product description found from fpp.cc. Authored by Daryl W. Perry, The Diary of Henry Myers tells the story of of the collapse of a tyrannical dystopian empire from the point of view of a reluctant hero. So, when you are done, uh, when you are done watching this video, please go to our voting page, which you can get to via our homepage right here. It's right above all our pictures of the finalists. You go to there. And you click on whichever one you want to read, and then you hit vote now. But you can enter your email, which gives you added weight, and any titles you want to nominate for future consideration, please put it in this field here. So that's all. I want to thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful month. Uh, please join us on April 5th and buy The Troy Standard and The Men Behind the Desk by A.G. Fredericks. Have a wonderful month. Be seeing you.